Hi everyone, so today I'm gonna be doing just a quick little like marker illustration just because I drew a lot this weekend and I had a lot of little like drawings that I wanted to try coloring in with markers and I thought I'd film it and have a little chat with you guys while I do so. I, as you guys know I usually use this um, sketchbook for anything markers related just because I really like the way that the markers come through on this paper and this is the sketchbook that I did in collaboration with Archer and Olive. You can find all about it um, in the description if you missed it. So yeah let's get started but also let's hear a quick word from today's sponsors Ana Luisa. Today's video is brought to you by Ana Luisa Jewelry. You guys know Ana Luisa if you've been following me for a while. They have been a great friend of the channel and continue to support my content, like today. Ana Luisa is currently running a Mother's Day campaign in light of the holiday coming up. My mom is a huge fan of Ana Luisa by now, so I just know that she'll love these cute little pieces that I picked out for her. I got this gorgeous May cubic zirconia mother of pearl necklace with a little crescent moon and it's so cute, I might actually just keep it for myself. Sorry, mom. But worry not, because I got this matchy matchy one that my mom can wear and it is this elegant Vinta disc necklace made of recycled sterling silver, mother of pearl and cubic zirconia. It's so simple and elegant and adds an extra magical sparkle to anyone's day. And lastly, I got this beautiful magical Noel cubic zirconia necklace that is just so adorable and tiny, but it's also so fashionable and sleek all at the same time. As I've mentioned in the past, Ana Luisa is very adamant about sustainability and transparency in the jewellery industry. They create sustainably crafted pieces, ensuring luxury is achieved without excess waste and mass production. Ana Luisa releases limited batches of their products every week to minimize waste and only use recycled materials in the manufacturing process. And on top of that, all their diamonds are lab grown, so no mining is required. As per usual, I am in love with these pieces from Ana Luisa and I highly encourage you to have a look at the collections on their website and take advantage of the current BOGO 40% sale, which means buy one get one 40% off. You can get one for mum and one for you. Treat yourself and your mother slash parent or a loved one with the gorgeous Ana Luisa Mother's Day campaign pieces and add a little bit of sparkle to someone's life. Click the link in the description to go check out Ana Luisa yourself and make mum's day. So as you can see I use just like a lot of marker in this and this is the illustration that I'm wanting to render out today basically. And yeah I'm gonna get out my markers. I've been using my Arteza markers as you guys know a lot recently. Um, they were super super awesome and sent me to basically all of their sets so I've got this like big chunky bag full of markers now which is the most exciting thing ever. And if you guys watch my markers videos, you'll notice that in the past few videos I've just been kind of going off of the numbers and I didn't really have a swatch sheet yet for these markers. But look what I did this weekend. Da 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 da! Finally, an Arteza Everblend markers swatch sheet. I'm so glad I did this and now I can actually see what the markers look like on paper. Look how pretty it looks. So yeah, I'm gonna be referencing this swatch sheet, obviously, while I work. I don't even have like a, a, a color idea for this um, illustration yet. I literally just wanted to sit and figure it out. So I've even preemptively done the red lining um, with my pencil yesterday with my favorite Castel Polychromo. So I literally just wanted to sit down today and have a chill like marker moment. I know that I would definitely want to do a bunch of like little baby blues because she does have like a pearl necklace and she's giving me very Cinderella vibes with these gloves. So I want to find a nice cute a balance between blues and pastel purples, obviously. <laughs> so I'm immediately looking at like these little pastel purples and these like almost tealy blues that I really like. And then of course I need some complexion tones for her face. I put all of the like sort of skin tones all together here so I could kind of look at them together. Yeah, so I wanted to have like a darker skin tone so I'm probably gonna go for a lot of these sort of darker... and I'll start off with a lighter version which is BR36. See, this is why I try to get all the markers that I might need to begin with because I take so long looking for the markers that I actually need that it is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I 
said, I'm like really happy. I've been drawing a lot for myself recently. I feel like I go through random periods of not drawing for myself for weeks and then just feeling super demotivated because I have like my actual creative outlet isn't being satiated, but then uh, it'll go on for so long and then I'll have like a few days where I'll fill in like half a sketchbook, just kind of going feral with, <laughs> with my drawings. And I, that's kind of what happened this weekend. I was just like, I don't know, I just felt really, really inspired. I, I spent all weekend just like drawing so much and it felt so nice. So yeah, I've got a lot, a lot of like sketches and ideas and stuff of um, drawings and illustrations I wanna do either digitally or traditionally. Uh, I've got quite a few lined up, so I'm excited for in the next few weeks to get to them whenever I have like sort of downtime. And I feel like I'm on a bit of a roll with balancing sort of my work and then drawing for myself, which obviously has involved saying no to a lot of things, but in the end, it's worth it because it means I don't <laughs> get burnt out. Okay, I'm actually gonna zoom you in a little bit. I feel like I'm a bit far. So I've done that and now I'm going to add in like the little blushes just so I can block them out um, for now I do want to go for a more red blush later on just because I think that'll look really cute contrasting with like the blues that I'm gonna use but for now just to block it in I'm just gonna pop this in here and I'm gonna add the sort of baseline blue colors to her gloves. Ooh, I might actually do like a little gradient using the lilac and go from like a purpley color up to this teal color. That'd be look, that'd look cute. And then I can use both of these colors that I pulled out. Yeah. Oh, that looks cute. Oh, look at that blend. And that's why they call them Everblends. I see. I'll actually marry in this lilac into her eyes. So it all matches. Yeah, see, I love the, like the contrast between that red and this. So I've added this red now and I'm cautious as to using, actually I'll do that now. I'm gonna add some reds here and then I'm gonna blend it out with this base color and then I'll add in shadings and stuff because then it'll be easier to hide it, this blush thing if I screw it up. <laughs> yeah, so I think I'll just add in the blush with pencil later because it doesn't seem to want to blend out as much as I was anticipating. It's okay. I'll add the shadings in now onto her face and then and then we'll figure out the blush later. Kind of hard shading out her like <laughs> torso area around these pearls, so I'm very concentrated because I don't want to. I want to avoid adding more work for myself, so I'm trying to really, really trying to color within the lines. And I'm gonna go in now with my darker skin tone and really enhance some of these shadows, and also bring 
a bit more warmth into her face in a bit with a more orangey sort of reddish skin tone with a like a reddish undertone because I find I find that with a lot of like skin tone markers sometimes the the, the darker skin tones like the browns end up being a bit ashy just because of you know you're normally using it on sort of like white treated paper and it can sometimes remove a lot of those warm undertones so I really enjoy adding a lot of like blushing and like more orangey and reddish undertone colors on top when I'm rendering out dark skin tones. Oh yeah, and also add the shading behind the pearls, which is going to be super <laughs> difficult to not fill in those white areas. Okay, we did it with minimal damage. Like, I know that I can just go back in and fill them in with, uh, with my acrylograph markers, but I really want to avoid giving myself extra work, and I feel like I rely on my acrylographs a bit too much so I feel like I just feel like I can't really color within the lines as much anymore and I gotta keep keep that practice up to scratch all right I'm gonna actually fill in her hair now so I can start seeing everything sort of come together so um I was very much in between giving her like fantasy colored hair like a dark dark purple to go with her eyes or just a, a regular dark brown. You know what, I might go in with a um, purple first and see what I think, because then if I wanna change it, I can just cover it up with a dark brown. So that seems like a safe option. See, I quite like it, it looks quite cute. But again, I feel like I'm always reverting to doing really f like fancy, fancy, fantasy colored hairs recently because I feel like I'm not adding enough color to my illustrations and then I get to the hair and I'm like, oh no, it's, it's looking a bit boring and then I add like really colorful hair. I don't know. If you have seen any of my like digital illustrations recently, you'll see that I've been like adding a lot of color recently into my drawings and trying to just be a lot bolder with using non-conventional colors that I would normally use like to render things, so. I do eventually want to start doing that with my traditional drawings, but I gotta build up the courage, I guess. So I guess it'll look a lot nicer once I add in like shadings and stuff and add like darker purple or darker blues for the shadings because um, right now it just looks a bit like flat purple hair so maybe that's why I'm not loving it yet or as much as I should <laughs> Okay, see now that I've painted in all of the hair, it looks like a lot of purple, right? So, what I'm thinking is I might go over it with like a a brownish sort of reddish color. I was thinking maybe like this like this coppery kind of color or this dark brown and just see what the mixture looks like cuz then it'll be like a muted purple and hopefully I like that a bit more. <laughs> I'm really going through it with this hair color. I can't make a decision. Um, so I need BR04. Here it is. Rusty, rusty rose. And it does kind of do the effect I was hoping. Yeah, 
I'm gonna go with it. And then if I don't like it, tough luck. See, I don't kind of, I don't really hate it. I think it kind of looks like dip dyed hair at the moment because of like the more purple, the purple it gets at the ends. I did that accidentally, but I think I kind of actually like it. And it still has that sort of purple vibe, but it still looks a little bit more, less in your face, I guess, like all of the purple. <laughs> Cause I feel like it was very jarring. Just so much, bam. Yeah, I like this a lot more. This sort of coppery, purpley color. So now I'm gonna go in again into the gloves with the same color just to add like shadows and just really make that gradient pop. Because I'm also gonna go in later with a bit of a um, either a gray or like a, a brownish color into the glove just to make it look like there's like skin in there. <laughs> I can already tell I'm gonna have to go in with a darker purple in here because there's only so much saturation you can get out of these like pale colors. And I'm gonna just get some of that in here too. Just to render out these gloves and make them look like, like actual fabric instead of just colored hands. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As, I, as I said, I wanted to add some more like warmth into her face. So I feel like this more like orangey uh, brown will do the job. And there's like a big significant difference between like, for example, this one and this one. You can see that this one's a lot more uh, cold, you know, a colder color. And I want a more warm color for it. dusty orange perfect this will be sort of my final color that I'll use for her face I'm just adding a little bit more shading around her like shoulders and torso area because it looked like so uh, light and just flat. <laughs> so I'm just trying to level, level it all out a little bit. To render out the rest of the hair, I'm just gonna use like a really dark brown. And Okay, I'm gonna finally go in and render out some of these pearls and then I think I can finally go on to pencils and um, like outline pens. Oh wait, actually her eyebrows. I have just realized 
I left them purple. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go over them with the same dark brown that I used to do the darkest areas of her hair. And that should do it. Okay, and I'm also going to just accentuate some of these creases in her eyes that kind of got lost in the rendering. So I'm going in with like a semi-darker gray first and then I'm going to blend it out with a lighter gray and then when I get to the bit where I use my white acrylograph paint pen, I'll do the super, super highlights with that and hopefully it'll create like a shiny effect. So now with the lighter marker, I'll just put a dollop on all of them and that will like blend them out and then I'll add in the other details with a paint marker oh yeah I forgot to add in the brown into these gloves so because I'm scared that it'll fully ruin like the colors that I've used so I'm just gonna do a little color test over here and see what happens so let's see what happens when I do that yeah, so it kind of like removes the entire color gradient. So let's try with a different lighter brown. See, that works a little better. I can't tell if you can still see the gradient. A little, a little. I might just do a quick little line on the inside and use this to add some extra shading here and there. All right, acrylograph. I've got a few actually on the go because they're all always kind of finishing because <laughs> I use them so much. Let's begin adding all of the nice little details, AKA fixing all of my mistakes. And then the whole like reason that I wanted to make her hair nice and dark is because I wanted to add in like a few cute little sparkles in her hair and like make it look nice and magical and shiny. Just kind of very dreamlike. So now I'm gonna in, go, and go in with my pencils and just add the super little fine details. Finally adding the those blushes that I wanted to do because I really wanted them to sort of match the red of her lips and just have that whole thing going on. And now with a super, super sharp black pencil, we have my favorite part, which is adding in those last minute little details that just really, really up the contrast. So like, for example, her lashes, cause you'll notice we haven't like even touched them because I always wait till the end for those like gorgeous little lashes.
Okay, so I think I've done like all the render that I wanted to with the pencils. So just for these like little stars and they're around, I'm gonna pick out a purple pen to do them, to just kind of carry on that purpley theme. And I'm just using one of my Arteza colored fine liners in 0.4 millimeters. And also to sign my name. Ta-da! It was definitely worth the wait since yesterday to render it out today. Because I wanted to do it yesterday, but I got a migraine. So I had to wait. Yeah, I think I might actually outline the gloves in this um, purple color too. Here we go. Yeah, I think that made all the difference. I like it. Gonna just do it on the other one too. Okay, yeah, I like this a lot more. I'm gonna do a quick little swatch of all the colors I use just over here on the side just to Keep a record of all the colors that I use, and also I think it looks cute. Alright everyone, so that is it for today's illustration. I'm really glad with how it came out. I'll post like a better picture of it on my Instagram in a few days, just because the lighting's um, uh, uh, leaving a bit to be desired <laughs> for today's video. Sorry about that. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope you enjoyed just drawing along with me or just listening to me draw and chat away. And yeah, I will see you guys very, very soon in my next video. Bye bye